I was pretty happy with this log store that I built just before Christmas. But then you guys in the comment section below the video, as you always brilliantly do, started coming up with a load of suggested modifications that I should put in place before starting to store the wood. So in today's video, I'm going to be outlining what modifications I've made and also explaining how I've corrected a pretty big error. Because like all DIY projects, nothing and no one is perfect, but hopefully you can take lots of ideas and tips from my video for your own log store project. Should we get the mistakes out of the way first? Right, this is a pretty major one and somebody points out in the comments you're going to smash your head on the roof. And as you can see, I haven't put in a lot of logs yet, but I certainly have bashed my head a few times on this. I didn't give any thought to what height this would be, obsessing more about sinking the posts into the ground far enough and also getting the picture of the roof right, which in hindsight probably didn't need to be as steep as it is. Now when you're designing your log store it'd be a good idea to think about this head clearance so you don't get a headache every time you store wood. The next mistake came to light almost as soon as I posted the video when Robert helpfully pointed out that I'd missed out the ridge tile under the lead flashing. And of course he was right and as you can see here there's a gap below the lead flashing where the tiles aren't doubled up. Now I don't know what I was thinking particularly as I re-roofed the garage this summer and so I was very aware of the importance of this shorter tile. Maybe I thought the lead would overlap the gap but either way I needed to get this sorted so I peeled back the lead. Unfortunately I had to do away with those lead clips that I was so pleased with and I inserted a row of ridge tiles underneath tapping it back down afterwards. We now have a decent overlap but the lead should ideally be attached to this higher course. I'm going to see how I get on with it this winter. If it leaks, it hasn't so far, I'll certainly replace it in the summer but after all this is only a log storm. And so we're on to the mods and I want to thank you all for your brilliant suggestions and perhaps the most comprehensive of these came from Hearts 4x4. He had loads of suggestions but let's start with the pallet base. Raising the logs off the ground helps air to circulate and dry them out and I was really pleased I hadn't cut up these old pallets left over from a delivery. I trimmed off the edges with my circular saw. I thought I'd try the plastic track saw compatible Ryobi HP brushless saw I was sent a while back but realised they put the blade on the other side. So frustrated by this I went back to my old brush saw and trimmed the edges using my rafter square as a guide. Circular saws are brilliant for jobs like this and that Ryobi HP still had a part to play, more on that in a bit. I then cut by hand a section off the pallet so that it would fit neatly on the paving slabs. I broke up the off cut to salvage what I could and extended the length of the pallet to the full width of the log store using some 3x2 leftover from my plasterboard fixings video and I introduced new slats on the pallet as the existing were a bit far apart using 100mm gravel boards bought from a local timber merchant. The Hikoki framing nailer was something I bought for the garage roofing project as I had a nightmare with the Pazzoid I hired but a hammer and galvanised nails would have done the job fine. And that was a pallet base more or less done. For the next mod I decided to build a shelf. Now a lot of you including Hearts 4x4 had pointed out to me that if I divided the log store into bays or zoned it effectively you can divide up seasoned logs from unseasoned logs and also different types of logs different shapes sizes made, making it much easier to rotate those logs and always pick from the most seasoned. I had a 4x3 length left over from the log store build so that got me thinking that I could make a shelf from this so I bought an additional length and constructed a frame with 4x2 supports internally to take gravel board slats similar to the pallet base. As usual I've rather over engineered this and the whole thing could have been constructed out of 4x2. Now this was undoubtedly a good idea but when I designed this log store I didn't imagine I was going to have a big weight bearing down on it from inside with all those logs. So at this point I perhaps overthought the whole problem. Rather than putting a wedge on one of the pillars like this and supporting the weight of the shelf off these pillars which would have been a much neater solution because I didn't know what sort of weight the front pillars could take I decided instead to support the internal shelf off the paving slabs themselves cutting a hole in the pallets to accommodate the supports. I suspect these pillars would have supported the weight but I just couldn't be sure. So I've ended up with this slightly awkward structure and these additional supports going from the shelf down to the slabs themselves. But I suppose the benefit of this is it will be increasing airflow around the sides of the logs to help them to dry out. The rear of the shelf was anchored to the garage wall with the concrete thunderbolts I used when building the store. These fixings 
going straight into the brickwork with no need for nylon wall plugs. And finally I decked out the shelf with 100mm gravel boards to match the pallets below. Which brings us on to mod 3, the back wall trellis. Another suggestion you made was to construct some sort of trellis to keep the logs away from the garage wall. Another brilliant idea I wouldn't have thought of. I had a quick look online and the dimensions I'd need for the top and bottom bays were looking expensive. So I thought back to that big pile of battens I ripped from the garage roof in the summer, now covered in frost, and decided to make my own. The battens needed to be cut in half down their length and to do this I'd usually clamp them down to the workbench with this piece of hardboard as a sacrificial strip underneath so as not to saw into the bench with my circular saw. But I bought these clamps from eBay a while back through Wii Shop so I could get share back. There's a link to how you can sign up to this here in the description below the video. And it occurred to me that I could simply clamp the old battens doing away with the need for table clamps and the danger of cutting into the workbench. And my old brushed Ryo BR18 CS struggled to cut through them and actually munched through an entire 9AH battery in a matter of minutes. I was about to reach for a 240 volt circular saw when I thought I'd give the new brushless Ryobi a chance to redeem itself. And sure enough, it made light work of the battens. I was gobsmacked how much more powerful and efficient on battery resources it was than the old R18. I should point out that whilst the tool was gifted, Ryobi haven't paid me for this mentioned chance would be a fine thing, but with the battens all cut, I could start putting them together into a trellis. I used some 40 by 2.65 millimeter galvanized clout nails left over from the roofing project, and it was surprising how quickly the trellises came together. The trellises fitted neatly into each bay and I anchored them in place at several points with 7mm brown plugs and these exterior screws. I actually found the screws a bit brittle as a few snapped when I then unscrewed them to insert glazing packers behind the trellis to further protect the wall behind from damp. But the rather brutal torque of the impact driver was probably partly to blame as this didn't happen when I used my 12 volt drill driver. I'm calling this mod partitions, but what I'm primarily talking about here is a need for a retaining barrier at each side of the store to stack the wood against, as it would have been a faff to have to stack the wood like this throughout the store to prevent it falling off the edge, and it would also have been an inefficient use of space. So it was back to those 100mm gravel boards, and the simplest solution seemed to be to screw them to the pallets, shelf and roof above, to provide a continuous partition for the locks to lean against. You've also suggested I install internal partitions. Right now I've got so much wood to stack up, I can't see the need to partition the store internally. Maybe that will change as I build up the wood. I'll let you know in the community tab. But what I did decide to do is create a small partition for kindling, and I did this again with the gravel board, screwing this to one of the existing noggins under the shelf, and a new 3x2 screwed to the pallets below. This can obviously be moved if I decide to increase or remove this space. The final mod was guttering. Whilst constructing the store, the rain properly dumped down, cutting through the sharp sand, cascading onto the paving slabs, and dripping down my back when I entered the store. So again, a few of you suggested I install guttering, and again, I've taken you up on the challenge. I bought this 76mm mini flow guttering from Wix, again through the Wii Shop app. I put the first bracket as high as I could, and then pinged a chalk line to get a nice consistent fall. In my view, this is the best way to get your guttering fall bang on. You're aiming for about 20 millimeters for every five meters. I also screwed these blocks into the rafters to bring the guttering out far enough. To cut the gutter and downpipe, I used my Trend 18 volt miter saw with its fine blade, a perfect tool. Although you do have to be careful not to shatter, particularly the guttering, as I did here, as I paused rather than gradually cutting straight through. It's very tight to the uh, to the roof, but I don't care because it'll catch everything it needs to. And then peace. Working out how to configure the downpipe was a tricky one. For the time being, I've diverted it through and under the flower bed and onto the lawn. The neatest solution would be a drain gully in the gravel. Depending on other jobs, I may fine tune it in the spring and will probably also install a water butt. 
And that's it for today. The frustrating thing is I haven't actually had a chance to show you the log store with all the logs fully stacked inside. And I've got a lot of wood lying around the garden from all the conifers we've cut down over the years that need cutting up. I've got some interesting observations on that, pros and cons of mauls against the Fisker's axe that I've got. I've also got this pretty cool log splitter from Clark, which I could also uh, showcase in another video. But the question is, is it a bit niche showing you how to split all this wood, given that most of us haven't cut down a load of trees in their garden and would be buying wood or getting wood delivered from uh, some sort of a local supplier. Let me know in the comments section below what you think. And also when I have stacked all this, I put a post on my community tab just to give you a few observations, whether I needed those internal partitions and generally a few photos to show you how I've done it. Other than that, I hope you found today's video useful and that it hasn't, in your view, been over the top doing all of this. The thing is, if you're planning to do a log store of your own, you don't have to implement all the measures that I've done here. You can maybe use a few of the ideas and employ them on your project. So hopefully from that point of view, if nothing else, you found it useful. As usual, details of everything that I've referred to today will be in the description below the video, which of course you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the more button and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And finally, as I always say, if you're new to my channel, it would literally mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you next week.